Hello, this is Chops, and welcome back to my channel, where we talk about the lore of Keyforge. In this episode, I want to talk about the Crucible, which is the setting for the Keyforge universe. So, first I'll start with a basic summary. The Crucible. It's an artificial planet located at the heart of the universe. It was constructed, or is currently still being constructed, by mysterious architects, which we don't know very much about. They have harvested countless worlds for their materials and in doing so have brought in various creatures, beings from all over the universe as well. And they're all coming together as well as the parts of you know the materials, the matter from these planets. And there, these beings are working together with Archons to unlock faults that have within them information regarding the answers to all of these questions about what is what is the purpose of the crucible currently we're in this very early stage where no one knows anything about the plans for the crucible so that's the gist but there's already a lot within there that i can go off on a tangent about because the first thing i want to talk about is in the very first sentence the crucible is at the heart of the universe at the center of the universe and really what does that even mean well there's a there's a couple possibilities first of all which one i don't really think is accurate in this case it would likely be the milky way galaxy since we know there are so one possibility is that they're actually just talking about the center of the galaxy in this case it would likely be the milky way galaxy since we know there are humans and martians within the crucible so some of the math that they use where they're talking about 10,000 times 10,000 planets, which really is, it's only like 100 million, right? So we know that within our galaxy, there are billions of stars, each potentially with their own solar system, their own uh, series of planets, potentially inhabitable. But when we're talking about the universe, we're talking about not just our galaxy, but every galaxy out there, all matter, everything unlimited potential. So when they refer to the galaxy a lot, it kind of confuses me because I really think if we're talking about something that's at the center of the universe and it's connected to everything in the universe, that uh, we're really talking about a much grander scale than just the galaxy. So another theory, it, then there's the other theory, which I think is my least favorite, that the center of the universe is the center of the observable universe and that basically is just relative to where you are in the universe for example the center of the observable universe to me is where i'm at uh, because it it's based on a unit of measurement for like how far light has traveled throughout the entirety of time that light has traveled so we can't see anything beyond the uh, observable universe because there's there hasn't been enough time in the universe for light to reach us and if that's the case I'd be pretty disappointed if that's the actual explanation for the center of the universe comment just because it's a cop-out that <laughs> the center of the universe is basically anywhere so I don't think it's that the center of the universe is basically anywhere so I don't think it's that so another theory is that if it is, in fact, a universal scale, uh, that maybe the center or heart of the universe doesn't necessarily mean like an actual origin point, but we're talking about a hub of activity, like where there's the most action and civilization and, and such. So, I mean, if you talk about the continental United States, the heart of the continental United States, I mean, some would say would be in the center point of the country but you maybe you would more accurately say it's like washington dc which is you know obviously not in anywhere near the center of it but it is you know people might consider that the heart of the united states so so when they're talking about the heart of the galaxy or the universe i mean perhaps they actually mean just a hub of activity not an actual like center point but then there's the other possibility but then there's the other possibility that uh, it is actually the center or heart of the universe means the origin of all life and matter and time.
time and space, the center of the universe is an actual fixed point within space. We don't actually know where the center of the universe would be. So if the crucible is built, I guess, around this origin point that like I'm, I'm picturing at its core as some sort of energy or some sort of, you know, sci-fi ball of light kind of thing that I think would be easily uh, linkable to the Archons because as the Archons are described, they are the only natural inhabitants of the Crucible. But if you're saying that the Crucible is artificially built, then that either means that the Archons are also artificially built or the Crucible is built around something that has that was there before the Crucible existed. And that's why I'm thinking that the Crucible itself, at its core, is an energy that is linked to all of the Archons and is linked to the entirety of space and matter and all of, you know, throughout all of the galaxies uh, throughout the universe. And my reasoning and my supporting evidence to that kind of concept is just that we know that Archons can communicate with all things. That's like the one thing that they've told us about Archons is that they have the the unique ability to be able to communicate with any creatures from wherever they come from in the universe. The other supporting evidence to my, I'm going to call center of the universe theory, is there's some language where it says the planet hangs in space. And I think that actually means that it's it's not moving through space like basically everything else in, in the universe is through the theories of the Big Bang, everything's expanding outward. But I'm just picturing this amazing planet built around a, a fixed point in space that is not being thrust through the universe. And it's not part of a solar system or part of a galaxy, it's just alone by itself. And it makes sense to be able to, to create this planet that you're going to be bringing everything from the universe to that it be in a fixed position. And I imagine this center of the universe has a sort of special like wormhole connection between each of the, the galaxies within the universe uh, that the architects use to travel and get their, their material. And it would make sense that that would be based around the heart of the universe. So some more evidence, uh, or at least information that I want to use to support my theory is that we've had some sort of hints that the crucible is actually that there may actually be another layer above the crucible or at least a shell that is under construction or I mean, there have been mentions of if you squint you might be able to see scaffolding in the sky so they wouldn't say that if there wasn't some sort of truth to that i believe or uh, maybe it's a red herring trying to throw you off but I'm under the impression that that means that beyond the atmosphere, which is currently you're unable to travel to, there's some sort of force preventing you from going beyond the atmosphere, that beyond the atmosphere in the crucible is a shell, could potentially be a large screen that projects space onto the planet and the, everyone on the planet. So that there is like an artificial day-night cycle, like there isn't an actual moon or sun that either, I guess in this case, would rotate around the crucible if it was fixed in position, which would be ridiculous, um, but is it's actually just projected. Now there are there is evidence that there are there is a, a sun set in this one story article with the uh, the disc creature that plays this game, and then at the sunset the game is over. And there's also of course the full moon card. And even in the text of that card, it says that mathematically it's impossible for there to be a moon. And I'm not even sure really what, what does that even mean? If this is a planet, then how can there, why is it impossible for there to be a moon? Perhaps the person saying that in this quote knows a lot more about the crucible than I do, or you do, or, you know, the archons do. But alas, there is a moon there. So that just makes me believe that even more. It's just a projection that comes and goes. Who knows? Anyway, those are my theories about why I think the crucible is at the center of the universe around an energy source and that 
space around it is faked by a projection screen and it doesn't really answer any of the questions about why it's there. So I, I have another theory and this goes along with it being the heart of the universe, but it really could just be if in fact the crucible is surrounded by a shell that you know anything that the creatures on the planet would see in space, it could be potentially completely fabricated. So, you know, if we leave the crucible, you could be in the equivalent of like downtown New York City, where it's just bustling civilization, planets and satellites and all that. We don't actually know what's beyond the crucible if in fact it is a closed system, kind of like the Truman Show. And like the Truman Show, people would be watching what's going on in the crucible. Because even in the intro trailer, Keyforge is described as the great and the most amazing, creative, unique game in the history of the galaxy. And <laughs> I know that the designers are obviously having a lot of fun with uh, with the, the lore, and they're obviously not trying to take things too seriously, and obviously I am trying to take things probably more serious than it needs to be. But um, consider that as a theory, that Keyforge is just like a big gladiator pit. All right, so enough about those theories. What more do we know about the crucible itself? Like, what is on it? We know that uh, countless planets have been, have been put together to construct the crucible. It has many layers, which we don't really know what that means. Does that mean that there's an, an entirely another, like, inhabited layer below, or even potentially above? We do know that below our layer is a superstructure that the disks currently inhabit a lot of and they you know I don't know whether they actually go beyond the superstructure and into the layer below they certainly don't seem to talk about it but basically the the surface of what we would call the, the surface level of the crucible is uh, all sorts of different biomes we're talking deserts jungles the red wastes of Mars every potential plant and animal and mineral out there and being. And we've even heard there's potentially time travel, there's interdimensional possibilities, and with all that and including the, the size of our universe, now we're talking about all space, all time, all dimensions. So the potential is truly infinite, which I think is the point that the designers wanted to make for the Crucible, is that they have unlimited potential. And there's quotes that the architects, you know, they do what they can to make sure that it is habitable for as many creatures as possible, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. So there's plenty of hazards out there and even different atmospheres, depending on where you are on the planet. We don't have like an actual map. There have been some um, name drops of like various actual specific locations. But in general, like we don't know where anything is it is relative to anything else. We know that there are metropolises, there are huge cities that everyone kind of comes together. Some factions are more um, private than others, specifically the Martians that we currently know about. But I imagine there are many others in the future that we'll find are more secluded. We also know that there are even like floating chunks crafted by architects there are these floating sections some believe that to be the construction of a new layer others think that it's just a random construction project and they even hint that the sanctum which are the inhabitants of most of those floating islands maybe they know a little bit more about it than they're letting on so there's probably some mysteries that's going to unravel about these floating islands but the biggest mystery is what is the giant spire that's coming out of the hole? It's a large, basically space elevator going all the way up to space. They don't know where it ends because they can't go as high as it goes. So what could this possibly be? Uh, I think perhaps it would be a an, an actually like an elevator, a way to transit between each layer. I imagine if there is like an inhabited layer below, it has a similar spire going from uh, top to bottom. And this would be a way for architects to move in 
and do work on the inside without like disrupting too much on the outside. Other potential, like if there is actually like this huge energy source at the center, like the core of the crucible, that perhaps that this is, it could even just be like a giant power line that reaches outside to allow the architects to still have access to this core without needing to, again, disrupt the surface level. It's similar to the Beanstalk, obviously, from, from Netrunner. If you know anything about that, it was a space elevator that was on the equator um, that a lot of the Netrunner world was built around. And, and But in this case, this is more like a tower because since it's not on the equator, we're not talking about a... I mean, I don't even know if this planet rotates or if you know the shell rotates around it or even if it just stays still and everything is simulated to rotate. It's like, who knows? Like this technology behind the crucible is way beyond anything that we could imagine. So anything could be possible in this case. And I also think that's why it's, it's totally plausible for there to be a massive tower uh, that doesn't collapse in on itself from gravity because it's made of a material that is strong enough to sustain that. So that's been a lot of talk about it. And I'm sure there's plenty more we'll find out as we go. I think in the next video, we're going to talk about the Archons, what they've uh, told us about the Archons and how they interact with the creatures of the Crucible, and also the, the game surrounding the act of forging keys and opening vaults. And then I think in the future videos, we're going to talk about each of the different houses. Basically, that wraps it up. Um, if you have any comments about my theories or you have some theories of your own, if you're interested in hearing more of these videos, you should subscribe, uh, like the video, and give me some comments below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Some of the locations that we know about uh, that have been listed from the rule books lore section about the crucible. Um, then there's the other theory, which I think is my least favorite, that the center of the universe is the center of the observable universe. And that basically is just relative to where you are in the universe. For example, 